There's so many men who are in bad situations with women yes. because the cowardice is they are afraid to lose her. Trump says it in his book, The Art of the Deal. If you're not prepared to walk away from the table, you cannot negotiate. And that is absolutely true in a relationship. If you are not prepared to get rid of her, then what are you negotiating? If you're not prepared to say, sorry, that's the red line, goodbye. Then you don't have a negotiating position. Mm -hmm. You don't have one because you'll just say, no, 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 forever. And you'll just stay forever. There has to be a line you will not allow to be crossed. There has to be, right? And so many men are so scared of losing the girl. But if you refuse, if you well, men message me all the time, I need my girl to listen to me. I need my girl to have sex with me. But I don't want to split up with her. You already lost. I was like, bro, if you're telling me there's no scenario in which you will leave her, I can't help you. I care about it because I have people submit to me all the time and they go, oh, yeah, but it's easy for you to take. You don't care. I say, no, incorrect. I will tell you right now on this podcast, I have walked away from women I loved with all my heart and women I missed mm. for months, but I never fucking told them and I never texted them and I never, I just fucking, I was a man about it. Right. Being a man about things isn't not feeling things. It's feeling things and still acting like a man. I've had women who wouldn't comply with X demand. I told them to get the fuck out. They called my bluff and they got the fuck out. And I missed their ass badly. And I still, as a man, ignored it. In fact, you know what's funny? One of them, after two and a half years, messaged me on Instagram yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and I read her message and left it on red. Oh! Bam! Oh! What did we do to make us on this show? <laughs> that, I, Yo! I, yesterday was a good, I remember I read it and, I, and she was sitting there and she was online <laughs> waiting for me to reply and I was like, no. Oh, Leave them hope on The no! ultimate victory. The ultimate victory. But. For the, when that girl left, it was a good two or three months I missed her. I wasn't crying missing her, but like, you know, you miss yeah, her, right? Yeah, you yeah, want to fuck her, yeah. she was hot, you miss her, right? But yeah. I never text her. Da -da -da. Being a man about things is not not feeling things. It's being a man about it. Be a man about it. If she's not going to be the woman you need her to be, she has to fucking go. And you just have to be a man about it and not be a fucking punk. So, like, some, like I, I have, uh, anyone who doesn't know me knows I used to run a webcam studio. So... I had 75 women working for me and they were talking to guys online and taking money from all the Democrats and betas who were sending them money and the money went to me. This is how I first made big money. So I kind of understand intersexual dynamics from a very unique perspective because you had me at the top, you had 75 women underneath and you had thousands of men underneath them giving them the yeah. money which kind of went to me. So it was kind of like a, a, a weird dynamic. So yeah, the, here's the truth about male-female relationships. Women fuck men they respect. Mm -hmm. That's it. They don't fuck men they like. They don't, they don't fuck men they love. They fuck men they respect. If she loves you and likes you and doesn't respect you, she will not have sex with you. I have women who respect me and fucking hate me, but they're here every time I call. <laughs> so if they respect you, they're going to sleep with you. Yeah. And this is something that's biological and evolutionary. They fuck men they respect. So how do you make women respect you? Well, first you have to be worthy of respect as an individual. There's no hack. If you're worthy of respect, you're worthy of respect. But secondly, you cannot allow blatant disrespect. So if you allow her to blatantly disrespect you and you tolerate that, then you're setting a precedent, which means, well, why would I respect this guy in the first place? Yep. I say this to guys all the time. I've, I've had loads of guys who come to me for like coaching and stuff. And they say, you know, my woman doesn't respect me, da, 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 da. And I say, look, it's much harder to fix something that's broken than just never let it go wrong in the first place. Right. So from the second you got together, you should have been a man and you can be, you haven't got to be an asshole. You haven't got to be aggressive. I'll sit with a girl and very politely say, look, if we're going to be in a relationship, if I'm going to take you seriously, you're not going to have male friends. If you want to hang around with a whole bunch of men, then yes. I'm not going to take you seriously. What do you mean you won't take me seriously? I mean, I mean, we can fuck, but I'm not going to be, I'm never going to look at you as serious material. So yeah. it, the, it's, the, the idea, the decision is on you. If you want to be serious, you're not going to talk to those guys. You want to talk to those guys, I'll fuck you sometimes. You, you decide. And I lay it on them. Now, if they choose to ha keep all their male friends, then that means she's chosen these friendships over me, which means sooner or later she was going to cheat anyway. Like, how long until she jumps on a new anyway? So why yeah. would I even be upset about it? But most men are too scared to just put the ultimatum down. And not you haven't got to put the ultimatum down in some scary, big, brash way. Just be clear. Look, any woman I'm with who I take seriously doesn't hang around with other men. So yep. it's, it's your choice. And, and this is the point. But most men don't say anything. They let it slide and they let it get completely broken. And they come to me and say, well, how do I fix it? It's like, well, you have to make it not let it get broken in the first place. You need to understand your boundaries and expectations as a man. And you have to set them and you have to make sure she complies and sticks to them. And if she doesn't, you're going to have to find somebody else. Yeah. And this is another thing I talk about being a playboy. I have lots of guys come to me and say, oh, Tate, but I don't want to be a playboy like you. 
I say, look, if you want to be happily married, the best thing you can be first is a playboy. Yeah. The best thing you can do because you're going to learn a whole bunch about women. You're going to have a yep. whole bunch of choices to choose for a wife. If you're stuck with one option, the one chick you met, yeah. you know, then it's she might be a dickhead. Some women are just dickheads, you know? Yeah. You know, some women have been fucked too hard too many times by too many big, scary guys, and they just don't want to listen to them. So, like, being a playboy is important. But, yeah, absolutely, for, for setting your boundaries and stuff and making sure you're not respected, the key is this as a man, and this is the bottom, bottom, bottom line. Most men are not prepared to walk away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And if you're not prepared to walk away, you don't have any weapons. Exactly. If she knows no matter what you won't leave, then what weapons do you have? Anything you say, shouting, screaming, yelling, go, going out away for a few days, whatever. She knows you're going to come back. She, you have no weapons. The second, imagine a girl came to you and she said, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you cheat, no matter what, da, 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 I will never, never leave. Right. Think of all the shit you do. <laughs> Think of what, I know I do. Yeah. So this is the point. So as a man, if you're never prepared to walk away, you're never going to be respected. Respect and the woman thinking, you know what? He might just leave are linked they have to be there so you have to mean what you say you have to let her know look there's some things i won't tolerate and if you fuck with me i'm gonna walk away and if you walk away and she doesn't chase you then then she's gone at That's least right. you saved yourself a fucking nasty divorce and getting cheated on and all that shit. just end it then and there and save yourself a bunch of time but men are too afraid to, to pull the plug on it because they get addicted to the pussy and they don't believe they can get any more pussy and they get all messed up and this is one of the advantages of being a playboy I can leave any chick because I, I, got, I got 10 more. Yeah. So if she doesn't act right, I'll just replace her for the night and I'll feel better by the next day. I go through a breakup a week. I'm used to it. Yeah. I don't give a shit. And it's just like, this is part of the game. So you have to be prepared to walk away as a man. So you have to look at any relationship you're in and say, okay, I'm a nice guy. I love her. She loves me, but I have boundaries. And if she fucks with them, I'm going to have to walk away. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're never going to be respected. I've yeah. been head over heels in love with women yeah. and left them and never yeah. got them back. And they never yeah. knew. Yep. Yeah. That's life. That's, That's how it, it. goes. I've been That's head over heels in love with women. I didn't want to lose them and they weren't listening. So I walked away and they didn't chase me and I lost them. But that's it. My honor is intact. My pride's intact. And now I don't give a fuck anymore because time's a hero. That's life. So exactly. it's better than staying in a relationship, which I'm not happy in because she starts acting like a fucking fool. And it's yep. kind of like I use chess analogies a lot, but it's kind of like chess. If you're in, if you're in, you're playing a game of chess and you're in a losing position and the only hope you have of winning is a big sacrifice. You give up your queen and you don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's the only hope. You're better off making the sacrifice even if you lose because if you don't you're just going to slowly get ground down and definitely lose in the end right. like do you do you love that pussy so much you'd rather delay the breakup by seven months and lose without any pride or honor yeah and leave without any pride or honor while she cheats on you isn't it better just to say right hand in the air you're not talking to that guy anymore like yep. it, it, the end is coming if she chooses to talk to that dude over you the end is certain so can you have enough balls to just say bye and at least leave with your head held high but right. this is another thing, man. It's, it's crazy. These, these men have never been through any kind of emotional trauma. So the idea of breaking up with a woman is is big to them. I've, I've, I've been through, when you've been through real shit, a breakup just doesn't become that real anymore. You know, I've had right. people try to kill me. I have stab wounds. Tell me again about this girl who doesn't text you back. Like, who gives right. a shit? Like, there's, <laughs> there's, people, like, there's people in Syria getting bombed. Yeah. You know, like you have to get some perspective and just realize you're being like there's there's real trauma out here in the world. Terrible things happen day after day. And here you are alive and breathing and perfectly healthy, and you're gonna cry over some bitch. Just man up. You are failing yourself and right. God. Can That's why she left you, Aiden. Can That's why she left you. Because why? Because I failed God. I'm correct. God. You're failing God. If you were the best version of yourself and you were waking up every day trying your absolute best to be a unique and special individual, then you would not be failing God any longer and he would not plague you with this bad luck. Now you're sitting here upset over some bitch who has replaced you and you deserve it. So what do I do, Andrew? I've told you what to do. I've told you what to do since we've ever started fucking talking. I told you to become a man of substance. I said, come here and I will train you. I will turn you into an animal, a predator, a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe later. Soy latte, please, from Starbucks. You're a fuck up, Aiden. You're a fuck up. First things first is that going through a breakup sucks. And every single man out here, no matter what they say, understands how bad it is to go through a breakup and understands what heartbreak's like. It's difficult. It's not easy. I'd actually like to argue that men feel more heartbroken than women. I think that's facts. I think it's true. And I think it's because one of the possessive element that we have, the idea of 
the idea of her being with someone else hurts more than the idea of you being with someone else to her. And secondly, because you have a lot less options than she has instantly. So I think that breakups are worse for men than they are for women. And I understand how difficult and hard they can be. However, unfortunately, the unfortunate reality is that chasing her and, and, and being dedicated to her and saying you're going to do whatever she wants, etc., is very unlikely to work. It's very unlikely to work. And you have to look at the scenario you're in, look at the chessboard and make the best possible move. When you're heartbroken, you true when you're truly heartbroken, you can't even sleep and your mind is constantly preoccupied. And instead of seeing that as a negative, what you need to do is use that as a source of unlimited power. If I was truly heartbroken today, let's imagine, and I could barely sleep, I'd be in better shape than I've ever been. I'd train like a fucking animal. You have to just take the energy inside of you. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted, mm -hmm. whether it's heat into light or uh, the momentum into friction or whatever, whatever you, however you want to put it, right? Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. And you have to look at that and understand that the sadness inside of you is energy. You can't destroy it, but you can convert it into something else which is constructive. And you just have to suck it up by our cup and get over it. Damn. And there's no other way to do it. And obviously having an abundance of women makes that easier. But I wouldn't even put it that way. I'd say if you were with a woman and you lost her and you're now lonely and she's going to be moving on and you're absolutely not heartbroken and you're destroyed inside, I understand how difficult that is. But now you have genuine sadness inside of you, which is unlimited motivation for you to become a fucking beast, become an animal. And by the time you're finished becoming an animal, you won't care anymore. So if you really want to cure yourself, you can just say, I'm going to get a six pack and I'm going to get bigger arms. And by the time my arms are this size and I have a six pack, then I'm going to think about that bitch. And you'll realize you don't give a shit about her anymore. That's just the way the world works. The idea that men don't feel emotions is incorrect. We feel emotions. I would actually argue we feel emotions in, in cert with certain emotions stronger than women. I would argue that we feel heartbreak stronger than women. I would argue we feel anger like a woman could never understand. I would argue we are extremely emotional. Rage. Rage. Pure rage. But it's feedback. So when you get the feedback, it's all about how you internalize that and how you process it, right? It's having stoicism's not not feeling emotions. It's feeling the emotion and going, okay, why is this happening? How much does this really matter? What's the most intelligent move on the chessboard? Chess is a fantastic game because in the game of chess, there's no mis there's no luck. If you lose, no matter how well you play, if you lose, at some point you made a mistake. Mm. Even if it's the most minor mistake, you made a mistake. So you learn to understand that no matter what happens to you, if you lose a scenario, you made a mistake. Maybe it's a tiny one. Maybe it was two years ago, whatever. But you made a mistake and you learn absolute and utter accountability for yourself. And that mentality is extremely powerful to apply to all things in life. The position I'm in now as the most hated man in the world, although I agree and I truly believe it's unfair, I still take complete responsibility for it. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm telling you why it happened when I talk about TikTok, YouTube shorts, but I'm not going to blame them. Absolutely. They're, they're, a, they're a company making money and they're monetizing the best they can. Fantastic. All of this is my fault. But the Bugatti on my drive is my fault. And the yacht is my fault. The private jet's my fault. So it's all my fault. So I take the good with the bad. I take all responsibility for absolutely everything, including if a woman leaves me, if a woman stays, if I end up heartbroken, if I end up filled with rage, I take responsibility for that. If something happens to me that makes me enraged. I will take responsibility. Why has this happened to me? Why do I feel this way? How did I end up in this position? Any emotion you feel should be converted into positive influence. Yeah. yeah you should do good things with any emotion you feel. I, I can't. And what else are you going to do with it? Quite and this yeah. is a genuine question. Yeah. What else? If, if let's say your, your wife breaks your heart. If you're not going to work, you can't sleep anymore. Mm. You're upset. She's running around with a new dude. You see her Instagram story. She's got some new guy. You're furious and you're, you're angry and you're jealous and you're bitter. You have all of this inside of you, but you're not going to go to the gym and work hard and become so fantastically in shape and so rich and so powerful that no girl ever leaves you again. You're not going to do that. No. What are you going to do with it? Text her? <laughs> Try and explain to her? She doesn't care. Like you can write the most perfect English. You can write the most beautiful words ever constructed. Forget Shakespeare. Convincing, you can convincing. do. It doesn't matter. She doesn't care. Mm. She just doesn't she care. She's distracted. She, she forgot about you. She forgot about you. So what are you going to do with all of that inside of you if it's not positive? Well, it's going to consume you, and you're going to end up self-destructive, or you're going to embarrass yourself, or you can take all of that and put yourself in a position where it never happens to you again. Yeah. Those are the choices. So. What's the most intelligent choice to make? Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't understand how many humans function in the world today. I don't get people who don't think like me. I, I, I don't understand it. I'm like, well, then how do, how have you survived this long? Life is hard. 
Life is difficult. I, maybe I've just been unlucky, which I don't believe in, but I've had so much trauma and bad events and negativity and stress and all these things that have happened to me. And I've used all of it to be monumentally successful. If I wasn't that way inclined with the workload that God put on my shoulders, I'd just be in a ditch somewhere. Yeah. I just would have killed myself by now. Yeah. Like, I don't understand how people are functioning. If you're not thinking like me and you're going through life with any other mindset, you've been extremely fortunate that God smiled on you and allowed you to sit around most of the time doing jack shit and you have yet to be punished for that. Yeah. Um, like women, women don't respect men when they Bro, look, look, a girl, look a girl in the eyes and you fuck her, tell her you're going to cheat on her. She, she loves her. Bro, man, they, they don't respect a man. They don't respect a man when no woman wants the man that no other woman wants. So, that they, is true. So, so women try this idea of, well, I want a man that I know all the women want, but then he doesn't want them back. And that, that, that ain't real, right? So the guys, that ain't real. So what I'm saying is what Will Smith did is he put himself in the position where he had no power and he got abused. And my point is this. When I said that the idea of being with one woman forever is going to be torturous, I'm not even talking about the fact that I don't get sexual variety. I'm talking about the fact that I cannot see myself five years down the line being in a position of power within my own life and household. I want a position of power. If someone breaks, bro, if, I, if I'm walking down the street with my chick and someone pulls a weapon and I have to fucking deal with him and I end up getting a fucking manslaughter charge, for example, I don't want her fuck with you to jump on a new dick and I'm going to sell. No, I need I need to have a position of power and control and I need to know she's loyal to me for life. That's what I want. That's what I enjoy. We have to understand nine, uh, there's so much human nature, which is biologically driven. That's their biological imperative. X guy fucked me. Even if I'm not pregnant, I could be pregnant. And biologically, right before birth control, if you get fucked, you might get pregnant. I could be pregnant. I'm not going to be able to survive out here in the world without a man to take care of me as a pregnant woman. He has this little house. I want to nest my ass in this house, keep the other chicks out. It's their biological imperative. It's, it's, it's number one, the thing they want to do. Of course it is. You have I, to re recognize what they're doing. And, and I'll just say to them, look, it's if you know things, even though I don't do anything wrong, but if you know even who I associate with, you know things, then you have to lie. Why is, isn't it easier if you just don't know? Then you got to lie, right? So let's just... I'm working. What's work? Work's work. You're on a jet. <laughs> You're on a jet. You're on a jet. Right? So I keep certain things from them because it makes it easier than them having to worry about a false narrative or a lie in the event of whatever. Or if we break up, then, then what? Right? So I'm very careful with that. I'm very, very careful who I talk around as well. Like if there's random, like on the yacht, me, Tristan, and my cousin, we were just with 30 girls on the yacht. We didn't talk business once. We talked business one night, but everyone was asleep. A couple times, like Luke went to go, hey, man, I'll message you. We'll be sitting in the same room, WhatsApp. This is people. Loose lips sink ships. Doesn't matter if you're doing nothing wrong. You gotta be careful who you're talking around. They listen to shit. And in the modern world, they record shit. Like, you don't want to, what's, even if it's a 0.1% chance, but what's the upside? Like, uh, there's no upside. Yep. So why take the 1% chance? Risk reward. You know, I'm, I'm very, very careful. And especially yep. with women, not because they're necessarily malicious, but because women in general don't have to worry about the certain things I'm talking about with terms of professionalism. There's a whole bunch of beautiful, smart, great women out there who just go through life and they're just Instagramming everywhere they go and they forgot their keys and do to do to do to do. And if she's too close to your circle, she's yeah. just an in, it's an in to get you. And you gotta be careful. And it's amazing whether it's the 1970s Soviet spies or the 2022 mafia, when they wanna get a dude, it's a chick. You either send a new chick or you watch his old chick or you find his girlfriend, even a bounty hunter today. Let's say I was wanted by the police and they couldn't find me. Who's his girl? But he's gone there, but he needs some sex. Go put, put a car there. Every time. Every fucking time. You gotta keep this shit in order. And and the women I associate with have enough respect for me to go, okay, I don't know. Fine. Just, I love you, love you. When they arrested El Chapo's girl, didn't she say I didn't know he was a criminal? I thought he was a chef or some shit. <laughs> like, he's been perfect. Perfect. She doesn't even know a lie anymore. He's a chef. He told me he's a chef. He's a chef. He's no, a billionaire chef. He's a chef. Dude's a chef. I don't know. The guy's a chef. So, and, and it's actually interesting because a lot of men want to brag to women because we want to show status. So you want to sit there and brag about all the good things you do, but there is a downside to that. There is a, a degree of downside. I was in Moldova. No, I take that back. I was in Constanta, Romania, nine years ago before I moved there. And I was in a club and I must've been the only foreign person in the club. And there was a 11 out of 10 Moldova girl, the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. And I went over and I tried to talk to her and she said, oh uh, yeah, I only drink champagne. And at the time I didn't have that much money. I said, oh, I only drink champagne. Well, I'm finished drinking for the night, but it's very nice to meet you because I couldn't afford a bottle of champagne, so I'd style it. So I was like, I don't have any, I said, uh, I'm finished drinking for the night, but it's very nice to meet you. What's your name? It's name. Okay, nice to meet you. Left the club, whatever. Next day I came, I saw her on this table, champagne show, champagne show, champagne show. Next table, champagne show. 
And while she was doing all this, I was, we were kind of catching each other's eye, looking a little bit, da da da. And a couple times I caught her at lunch, because Santa's like a beach town. I caught her at lunch, I spoke for a little bit. And she kept asking me for champagne. I was like, listen, you are absolutely gorgeous. I think you and I are going to have a long and happy future together, but I'm not going to buy you champagne. I'll tell you why later. I put mystery on it. I can't tell you broke, right? You got to put mystery spin. So I'm going to tell you why I don't buy champagne later. It's a long and interesting story. Once I can trust you, I'm going to tell you why I won't buy you champagne. You can trust me now. I will tell you, but not yet. But style it off, style it off, style it off. Anyway, as we got to know each other across the summer, eventually when we became friends, she came clean. She works for the club. She gets commission on champagne. Of course, of course. The girl's in the club. You're buying champagne for this thing. She gets a co commission per ball. What was interesting is this. She had on her phone a system. So she'd meet you. You'd buy her drinks the first night. You'd go a separate date. The second night, you'd buy her drinks. Third day, she'd send a pre-decide already in her notes how you live far away and you're, she can't fall in love again. She's only been with one man her whole life. She falls in love with you. She's going to have her heart broken and she's scared. And then she'll ghost you for three days. Then eventually after begging, you'll get her back, but she wants to come, but not on her own because she's scared. She wants to bring three friends and she'll go to this restaurant. She wants to drink this champagne. Boom, boom. A commission, 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 commission. And she'll show me in her Facebook message, every dude, playbook, every fucking guy, one after another, every night of the week, all just falling for the playbook, falling for the playbook. She goes, you're the only guy who never bought me champagne. Like, yeah, well, I didn't tell her I didn't have any money. I was just <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I, I was like, I've been around the world. I know some things. So anyway, I, I played it off. And she was sitting there telling me, yeah, and this, and when she was going through it, it was scared to me. She goes, yeah, this guy on Facebook, yeah, he's from Turkey and he, he does private airplanes and da, 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 da. And this slips. guy, da, da. she's telling all their jobs, the money they're making, where they live, the town they're in, because these dudes are sitting there talking. I'm so rich, baby. I'm so rich. I'm so rich. You want champagne? I got it. I do this. I do this. I do this. I do this. And I'll sit there thinking, whichever mall boss picks this girl up is going to have a whole bunch of targets to go rob it all night long because dudes just can't shut the fuck up. And this is when I was 24, 25. Ever since then, I, I, I style it off. What's your job? Oh, I, I work. It depends where I am. If I'm like in, in Romania, I say I make papanash, which is a Romanian donut. It's a national food. You're the donut guy. I say I make papanash, baby. No. The papanash is like I'm number one. But I just style off. None of them know my job. None of them know what I do. None of them know what I, because I don't, I, you don't know. Papanash. You don't know what they know. So <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very careful when it comes to talking to women for that reason. Quit. Quitters are the number one type of people that nobody can help. If you're a quitter, I can't help you. Life can't help you. God himself cannot help a quitter. So if you lack discipline, you lack the very basic building block to any type of success which exists on the planet. By every single metric which can be measured with science, you are going to stay a loser and a failure. The key is to keep training. If you train hard every single day, you don't have to worry about a little bit of vitamin C. It's true. If you don't train and you don't smoke, you're still going to be a pussy. Yes. The answer is always hard, hard work. work. As soon as you are granted life, you are guaranteed death. What you do in between is up to you. You are all conscious. That could end tomorrow. That could end in 100 years. But the time between the beginning of your consciousness and the end of it is completely up to you. Training is never the wrong decision. If you're in jail, you should train. If you are free, you should train. If you are rich, you should train. If you are poor, you should train. If you smoke, you should train. If you don't smoke, you should train. If you drink, you should train. If you don't drink, you should train. You cannot escape that hard work. It's always the correct decision. There is no time in any scenario when working hard is going to be the wrong answer. You should always try your very best in all things. I will smoke 10 cigars a day and beat the shit out of you mm. because I train harder than you can possibly fathom. Pain is an extremely important part of the equation. Pain is the elixir of success. When people say this bad thing happened to me and I'm suffering, I say good. It is pain which is required. It's one of the elements in the chemical reaction. If a chemical reaction requires five particular indis, uh, distinct compounds and you have four and you're missing one, it simply doesn't work. Pain for a man is one of the most important elements in becoming successful. Batman is Batman because they killed his parents. If they did not kill his parents, he would not be Batman. You're supposed to suffer. You're supposed to take that pain. The worst thing that can happen to you as a man is you live a life with no pain in it. To be born into a rich family and have a nice easy life and be given money and you don't have to go to the gym and not have to train because you have bodyguards and sit around like a fuck up. You're going to be miserable and unhappy and a drug addict buying prostitutes. You're only going to have women who adore you. You're only 
going to feel confident in yourself and feel happy when you've been through hell and come out the other side. The pain is required. And you'll often notice that people who are better than you are people who have suffered more than you have suffered. So the person who is waiting for you, he requires your motivation. It also requires huge amounts of pain. So when bad things happen to you, do not sit at home and lament. Do not feel sorry for yourself. Instead, look in the mirror and say, thank you, God, for giving me one of the ingredients that is needed for the chemical concoction that is going to turn me into a superhero because pain is an extremely important one. In fact, it's one of the most important ones for a man. Everything is war. All of it. Sitting in the commute without losing your patience is war. Trying to find a way to escape your slave job is war. Keeping your wife happy and your children inspired is war. Training to become stronger than before is war. It is all war and it cannot be avoided. And I'll tell you why it's war because war is two opposing sides trying to achieve the same goal. Two opposing sides want the same land or the same influence over X land. And the car you want, the Ferrari, you're not the only person who wants it. The reason it's so expensive is because others people want it. The, car, the girl you want, the beautiful woman, everyone wants her. It is war. It is competition. Everything about life as a man is war. It is conflict because you are competing against the other men who want it the same, which is why discipline is such an important thing, which is why you must take the pain and add it to the concoction to become as formidable as possible. Life is war. This idea that you can go through life as a man and avoid war is probably the biggest mistake that most men make because it is impossible for you to achieve anything significant without war. Running a business is war. Running a hotel, running a restaurant, running an online company, it's war. Training is war. Life as a man is war. You need to wake up and view it exactly as what it is. Everything I want, other people want. Everything I desire, other men are trying to get. This is a war and I must outcompete them. That is the best possible mental model you can have. Even in jail, it was a war for who could stay most calm, a war who could control their mind the best, a war for who could suffer the least. That is war. I was surrounded by people who lost their minds and I refused. It was a battle and I was successful. Life in and of itself as a man is a never ending struggle and a never ending battle It is the constant of the human condition. Evolution requires pain. While others complain that they do not feel happy enough, I'm happy I'm struggling. I don't want to be happy. I want to be great. This is the beauty of life as a man. Do you understand? I don't care. I'm happy to be struggling. I wanted to fight. You wanted to win. I wanted to fight. That's the difference. You're concerned with winning. I wanted to just fight. And we're fighting. That is the beauty of life as a man. To be great. If you concern yourself only with being happy, you are once again acting like a female or a child. Happiness is fleeting. It doesn't even matter if you're concerned only with the hedonism of happiness. You're going to drink alcohol and go to parties and go to festivals and take drugs. I want to be happy. Who cares? I want to be great. I want to be great all of the time. And let me ask you a question as a man at home, genuinely, truthfully. Would you rather be a loser who's always smiling, a happy loser, or would you rather be a stressed winner? Because I'll tell you something about winners. Most of them are stressed. We are stressed. We're stressed. Putin is stressed. Genghis Khan was stressed when his messenger turned up after a four-week ride with updates from the battlefront of Iran. I'm sure he was stressed by what he read. Even if it was very good, even if it all looked fantastic, he started to feel stressed. Okay, well now maybe I need to go to Iran. How long is it gonna take me to get there? Maybe we need to send more horses. Maybe we need to colonize her, uh, Iran. He, he felt stress because the beauty of life as a man is to be great. So you have to sit here and ask yourself, do you wanna be a happy loser that's insignificant? Nobody knows you exist. Women don't respect you. Men don't respect you. Nobody cares if you live or die, but you get to smile all the time. Or do you wanna be one of the most important people on the planet with a little bit of stress? I am brilliant because I've decided to be brilliant. And if I had to sacrifice happiness to be brilliant, then that's fine. You know what the great thing about it is? You know what's amazing what God gives, how the whole world becomes full circle? If you stop caring about being happy and you start caring instead about being great, guess what you end up being? Great. Along with great. And you know what? Yeah, happy. You end up happy if you forget about happiness and try to become great. You will never be successful if you're concerned about being happy. So forget about it. I like to consider myself a wise old man, and I'm trying my best to encourage and instigate 
a revolution amongst the youth where men take absolute self-accountability and they believe in themselves and they take responsibility for absolutely everything. As a man, you are most formidable if everything is your fault. If it rains outside and you get wet, that is still your fault. Can you control the rain? No. Could you have brought an umbrella? Yes. You need to blame yourself for all things, the good and the bad. And by doing this, you take absolute self-accountability, which allows you to build a mental model in which you will find solutions one to avoid trouble because you know that anything bad happens to you is your fault and three be the most fearsome competitor possible because we're living in a very competitive world nowadays amongst the elites the people who understand that you're living inside of a fish tank are trying very different very hard to get out and you have to make sure that you can outrun some of them if you want to escape it's an age-old adage if a bear is chasing a group of people you do not have to be the fastest one you just have to be faster than the slowest the slowest person is going to die. So as long as you're ahead of the majority of people, you stand a very good chance of avoiding slavery. Being a powerful man isn't always about furious anger and instilling fear. As enemies attempt to attack your energy and lower your vibration, understand this. Power is untouchable. Power may notice, but it doesn't care. Sometimes power is simply not giving a fuck. Being a powerful man isn't always about furious anger and instilling fear, meaning sometimes it is. You need to retain the capability to instill fear with furious anger. A man who cannot do that is not a man. It is one of the cards you need to have in your deck. However, more often than not, when you're in a true position of power, you will play the alternate card, which I'm describing here as simply not caring. How can you not give a fuck about things? Well, I'll tell you how. If you're filthy rich and you have a strong network of people around you who you trust and you have a good family and you have beautiful children, you have women who love you and you have beautiful supercars, you live with your best friends in a compound, you have armed guards and you're proud of yourself and you're strong and you train hard every day and you're monumentally successful and all of your dreams come true. And if you want something, you can instantly snap it up. You want a Pagani, you want a Bugatti, you want a $25 million apartment, anything you want, you buy. It's very easy to not give a shit about the opinions of people who don't have one fraction of your success. Mm. And what these people are trying to do is drag me. I'm using me as an example, but we can also use it for you. When you have true power, they're trying to drag you down. They're not trying to elevate themselves. They're trying to drag you down, which is a very different thing because it's amazing how God rewards those who are trying to build and create and elevate and how it punishes those who are simply trying to destroy and be spiteful and negative. And these people are going to dedicate hours and hours and millions of hours of their life towards a certain cause Thank you. to try and drag people down who they cannot affect because they're already too powerful and too large. And they're wasting their own human experience and they're not progressing or advancing themselves in any way. They will stay brokies and we will stay rich forever. So the lesson here is that you need to get to a position where ignoring people is a move in which you're guaranteed success. You can ignore people completely and they are benefiting you. And that comes from a position of power. And I think a lot of you at home right now, you may not be in our position, but if you're already working hard, you're already going to the gym, you're already training, you make sure that you're getting as much muscles as possible, as much money as possible, you're dedicated, you don't sleep in, you don't waste your time, you don't smoke weed, you don't play video games, you're focused on trying to become fantastic as a person. You can just ignore that girl. That girl who broke your heart or, or cheated on you, just ignore her. The most powerful move you can make is ignore her. Yeah, you could yell at her. Yeah, you could try and make her scared of you, blah, blah, blah right? That's mm -hmm. not going to work. The powerful hard. move is just to completely ignore her yep. because you're on your ascent. She is likely on her descent. She likely has no intention of improving herself, no intention of becoming richer, no intention of becoming better looking. Time is against her. As she gets older, she's going to lose her looks. You're going to continue your ascent and she's going to have to watch you for the rest of her life. Be the man that she could have been with that she's no longer good enough for. The best thing you can do is simply ignore her. That is the powerful yep. move. And it's the same with also men. It's not even a gendered argument. There's men who want to be your friends right now who want to be your friend and they did something wrong to you. And if you're on the right path doing the right things, karma, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is going to teach them a lesson for simply failing to be a good person to you while they had the chance. But when you have a whole bunch of money, you take care of the people you love. And that's the masculine prerogative. And even my brother and I, anyone who's been loyal to us, who's on our team, we monumentally reward. And everyone who ever displayed cowardice or sold us out or made mistakes massively regrets it because they see how well we treat the people who are close to us if you lack somewhere excel somewhere else mm -hmm. counter your weaknesses by honing other capabilities if you're ugly become filthy rich if you're poor be as strong as an ox life is unfair the primary focus of your energies is to balance the books 
And there's two different ways you could interpret that. You can, obviously, increase the attributes that you are lacking. If you if you have the ability to train, because uh, a lot of people don't. Some people are born without arms and legs. But you, with two arms and two legs, are sitting at home jerking off the Pornhub, flabby and fat. If you have the ability to train, you should be doing it. But also, you know, there are some things that some people are just better at, and you can counteract that problem by teaming up with people who compensate for your weaknesses. People who are strong in areas where you are weak, and you team up with people where you are strong in areas where they are weak. I don't think between the people in this house and our group of friends, we lack anything. Correct. Anything. Correct. Literally anything. We can sit as a group and have a conversation about anything with anyone in the world and give useful insight and change people's lives for the better because although I am not perfect, our team compensates one for each other. And that's the point of brotherhood. So excel in one area if you lack in others. I have people say to me, Andrew, I'm short. What do I do? I'm short. Okay, God made you short. Fine, good. Doesn't matter, you can't change it. What you can do is become as strong as an ox and become filthy rich and monumentally important and extremely influential. You can do that. Uh, people say, I'm poor. You should be strong. Oh, I'm strong, but I don't have any money. Okay, then teach others to be strong. Yes. You, there's always a way you can take your advantages and use them. And by teaming up with other men, other people, you can build a team in which there are no weaknesses. So if you have a disadvantage, you also have somewhere God has given you a distinct advantage over others. And it is your duty to excel in that realm. It is your duty to become so monumentally influential and powerful within that specific criteria in which you have the capability to be brilliant that your weaknesses no longer appear because they can be simply overshadowed by your network or overshadowed shadowed by your absolute competence by constructing the correct mindset you can be in the exact same scenario you're currently in, living the exact same life with a different mental model in which you view the world and you will not only feel more powerful you will be more powerful you'll achieve more amazing things you will be greater you will be happier with the same car the same woman the same house the same income the same everything but your mind changes the lens in which you view the world lenses change things rose tinted glasses perhaps dark glasses you can put glasses on change the lens and you can view the world differently by changing how your mind is constructed and put together and the way you view the world that is the point of mental aikido I woke up this morning and I looked around and I thought, in the alternate universe, I'd be waking up now in that room. And I, I just, I, I, I took a second to thank God I wasn't in that room, still. Because if I would've got 30 days yesterday, I don't have no, I have no idea how long I would've been in there. And I mean, it goes down, it goes further down the rabbit hole because you can look at yourself and you can be cognitive of, of yourself and what's happening to you. But you start to understand that all of these systems we rely on to keep society functioning at best are limping forward, at best. People imagine, people who are inside the fish tank who are stuck in the middle of it and have never gone up against a glass wall, they imagine things like the justice system or the banking system to be well-oiled machines, a Ferrari tearing down the highway. When the truth is, it's actually far more like a pickup truck with two wheels missing. And it's moving forward, but there's sparks everywhere, they're damaging the road, it doesn't handle properly, it's about to crash, it's screeching. Yes, it moves, but it's so full of fault. There's so many mistakes with it. There isn't a jail on this planet without innocent people in it. There's, there's not a jail on this planet without innocent people in it. And there's also not a jail on this planet without people who've been missentenced, who have sentences they shouldn't have ever picked up. And my father, who was a professional chess player, he hung out with a black guy called Jack. Now, when I asked my, Jack used to have a lot of money on him. I asked my dad when I was a kid, I was around 10. So what's Jack's job? My dad said, don't worry about Jack's job. Turns out later, I found out that Jack was a, was a street in Chicago because we grew up in Gary, Indiana, just outside of Chicago. And he was a street. Jack is now dead. Funnily enough, side story. His number one chick stabbed him to death in his sleep because she went to another. He found out, beat the out of the. And this pimp convinced his number one chick to kill him. So she stabbed him to death. She's got life. Jack's gone. But I remember Jack saying to me when I was young, 
I said to my father, I said, where's Jack? I haven't seen Jack in a while. My dad said, ah, he's gone. He's busy. And when I saw Jack like eight months later, he said, oh, I've been in jail. And I said, I remember, I remember this vividly as a kid. I said, why did you go to jail? And he said, I caught a case. And I said to my dad, what does caught a case mean? And he said, it's like catching a cold, son. Just catch a case. I didn't think much about it. And then in jail, I was recollecting that, thinking, <laughs> you just catch a cold sometimes. You're going through life and you get a sniffle. <laughs> like, you just catch a case. Like, there's so many people in jail who just call a case. You, like me, I just caught a case. I became too big on the internet and I pissed off someone or I overtook a prosecutor in my Bugatti. I could have been driving my Bugatti through Bucharest and cut up a prosecutor. Could have been that simple. I could have seen some guy in his Chevrolet and said, get out of the way. And he was like, ah, okay, Mr. Tate. File begins, type, 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 type. And I get you. You just catch a case. And it's crazy that you're, you're put in this depressing place of despair and your life is absolutely decimated and this justice system, which is limping forward with its missing wheels, which everybody believes is some kind of fair representation of right and wrong. And there's people who are thrown into this grinder because they've just caught a case. And you could argue that in the end, people who are innocent get out and guilty people stay perhaps. But then you have to go down the rabbit hole of, well, the process is the punishment. Most people simply can't just go to jail for even me, three months, not that long. You lose your job, you go to jail, you be slandered in the media, you lose all your devices, you lose access to your bank accounts and all your money for three months, and you come back out. How are you paying the bills? How are you paying for your children? You think your wife's even still sitting there? Do you know how many people I heard on the phone screaming and arguing with their wives? All they did was use their phone calls arguing with their wives, and their wife, in her own female entitlement, because females are selfish, well, you're in jail, yeah, but I have, pro how can I pay the bill? I need this, I need this. Your man's in fucking jail, you're screaming at him to pay the rent? He can't, he can't. But she, what's she gonna do? She's gonna yell at him, or she's gonna find another guy and yell at him because she wants her bills paid. So it's crazy how most people don't understand how broken the justice system is. I don't know a better alternative. I'm not proposing one. I'm just saying that if you think you're gonna go through life and if you ever end up in the justice system, it's all gonna be fair and just and it's gonna be fine. You're gonna realize that it's nothing like you expect it to be and you better hope you don't catch a case. It's amazing how, when you look at the differences in the sexes, how, and I, I don't have any scientific evidence for this, it's just my theory, but my theory is pretty simple, is that women are physically weaker than men. So they are obsessed with self-preservation and they want to make sure that somebody is protecting or providing for them. They're very worried about being completely and truly alone in the world because they can't do it. So as a man, when you're no longer able to protect and provide either financially or physically, a lot of your appeal to that woman vanishes. So she can love you. Of course, she loves you. But love is not unconditional, whether you're a man or a woman. That goes into something funny. A, a, a guy said to me only the other day, he goes, all these women only like you because you're, you're rich and you're a kickboxer. I said, I only like them because they're pleasant and beautiful. So <laughs> is love real or is it based on these conditions? If she, if she only loves me because I'm famous and smart and strong and rich and tall and spontaneous and gorgeous with a long Johnson, if those are the only reasons she loves me and I only love her because she does as I say and she's beautiful and she makes me happy, well then both of us are operating on a conditional love, aren't we? That's what love is. And primarily, most men's condition for love is, I'll pay the rent, I'll take care of the family, I'll take care of you. If an intruder breaks in, I go downstairs. And that's all he really has to offer. He loses that when he goes to jail. And you'll often see, in my experience in Romanian jail at least, a lot of the times the men go to jail, not because of what they were doing with their woman, it's because of things they were doing with their friends or things they were doing by themselves. So the woman's on the phone, well, I told you to stop hanging out with those guys. I told you to stop going to clubs. I told you to stop this. You left me at home with the kids. You were out with those idiots. Now look, you're in jail. I didn't want you to go there. I tried to stop you. Who's paying my rent? Who's paying my bills? That, and they just turn on the dude and you're right. They are never the same because women can make, call me a misogynist. Not the first time it's happened. Women can make anything about that. You can go to jail 
and your chick will be like, what about me? How do I feel in all of this? This is hard for me. It's like, I'm in jail, it's hard for you. I'm in jail. So you're right. And, and the, the gender dynamics come into play. And certainly you're absolutely correct. One of the few things that keep men sane in the places like that is the idea of their loving wife, is the idea of their visits. It's the idea of not being forgotten. You know, when I was in jail and they were putting on the news about me every day, all these lies, like they're doing right now. I was in jail yesterday to put up all these lies. Andrew Tate is wanted in England for Andrew Tate, 21 victims. All of that's bull by the way. What has happened is that the UK government had a case with three girls, all actively working sex workers, by the way, actively working, three girls who attempted to extort me for money and the CPS closed it. And the UK has reopened the case from 2014. Now there's all these conspiracy theories on the internet and people talk about 21 girls and all this garbage. I've seen the warrant, three girls, seen the names, seen the thing, I've seen it. So it's the same garbage, bull So the whole thing's a joke, but we have to come out with truth and fight these people with the truth and make it clear that we don't believe it anymore. No man is safe from this garbage. The, the current case against me in the UK that they just tried to extradite me for has already been rejected prosecution by the CPS. They reopened it because I'm famous. If that's not a matrix attack, tell me what is. Tell me what is if that isn't. And it's the same three And I've seen the warrant and I have the paperwork. And in the end, God's justice will come. But just going back to men and their wives and, and, and the struggles in jail, the idea of knowing that you're not forgotten is extremely important. And the reason I say this is because Yesterday when I was in jail, they were lying about me. Previously when I was in jail, they were lying about me. And the media is wall-to-wall -wall coverage. But I said to Tristan, even though this is all lies, it makes me feel better. Because I think the worst thing that can happen to you in jail is to be forgotten about. There's some haters on the internet who, try, who dedicate their lives trying to take me, take me down. Faceless autistic trolls, and they get false information, and they spread it everywhere, because they're idiots. But that is reassuring when you're in jail. Look, I'm still the center of their universe. They're still obsessed with me. I'm still the most important man in their lives. They still have no friends. They still have no girlfriend. They're still losers. This is fantastic. The people who were saddest in jail were the people who were forgotten. And when your wife leaves, that's for many men, the final straw in the forgotten. That's it. Their friends have moved on. Their gangsters and friends from the corner have moved on. The, the prosecutors moved on. Their public defender doesn't answer their calls. The one person left is their wife. When she moves on, they're just a ghost. They become, my brother and I called them the very unoriginal name, jail men. There was a guy in there who'd been there for 17 years. His wife had left him six or seven years prior. No money on his commissary, no visits. And I said, he's a jail man. Tristan said, yeah, he's a jail man. He's just a, a man in jail. He's a jail man. There's, there's nothing on the outside for him. There's no life outside. He's just a jail man. And I think that your wife leaving you for a lot of these guys is like you said, they look at the visitor car park and yeah. nobody else is coming. And if she ain't coming, that's it. Yeah. You have no link to the outside. What? My entire case is a lie. The translations are a lie. If my brother said, well, kick him out, they changed it to, well, kick him or kick him in the face. They lied. The conversations that they put together are a lie. They have a conversation from September and they delete a bunch till December and they put it together and pretend it's one conversation, it's a lie. The, the video testimonies from the girls who said, the victims who said they're not an organized criminal group, I'm not their victim, what are you talking about? The translation of the video, which is in a written statement, which is submitted to the judge. The judge doesn't watch the video, she reads the piece of paper is all different than the woman actually said. It's literally criminal. It's literally all a lie. Everything is a lie. Everything you find on the internet is a lie. It's all a lie. All is a lie. And a day will come when this case is over where we'll show side by side for anyone who believes this shit. None of that is true. That is all a lie. This is what actually happened. It's all theater. And this is, what I, this is what's amazing to me. People say, have you seen the Tate indictment? Have you seen the edited version of events based on the last 10 years of my life put together by the people who have no problems lying trying to put me in jail. Well, I'm sure that looks bad, but it's not real. And, and people are asinine and foolish 
to think that that's not how these things work because you just nailed it. What prosecutors do is they lie by omission. By omitting parts of the phone calls, they lie. So there'll be a conversation where I'll say to somebody, hey, hey, how are you? You better come over here. Why am I, am I not better? Because I'm hungry, I want dinner. Oh, okay, well, I'm in traffic. Okay, love you, hurry up. Boom, Exa example, right? They'll take, ah, you better come over here. They'll get rid of the rest. Better come over here. Misogyny, threatening language. Boom, uh, Andrew Tate's abusive. He doesn't respect women. He threatened her. Boom. They'll ignore the fact that we're saying we love each other. We'll ignore the fact she's asking me what I want for dinner and she's at the store. She said, no, they take that one snip and they put that one bit in the indictment and then some jackass will read the indictment and go, look, this is a bad person. <laughs> these people, what's amazing is you can either say these people are dumb, but I don't think they're dumb. I think they're just ill-intentioned and it's convenient for them to pretend that it's true because it fits their narrative, right? It's the same with everything. Same like a prosecutor. He wants it to fit his narrative and that's human nature. But the reality is different. And, and what you said is so true. It's so true because if you're a person at home watching this and if you think a prosecutor isn't assigned to you and can't go through the last 10 years of your life and make you look bad, if you think you're living so pure, because people do, they go, I've done nothing wrong. I'm not scared of the police. I don't do anything wrong. Bro, you are ignorant. If they get their teeth into you, sir, and they go through every phone call you've ever had, every text message you've ever sent, everywhere you've ever been, they will find crimes and your indictment will make you look like the antichrist. Fact, fact. And that's a story which is truly not that uncommon. It's really not that uncommon. You know, I'll tell you a really quick story. Because Again, going back to my earlier point, I said at the very beginning of this about being rational and non-emotional. My experience with the Romanian justice system has been one that has left me, to a degree, I respect it because I understand it. And the reason I'm gonna say this is because I would liken the Romanian justice system to the justice system in many parts of the world where they'd rather be far too harsh than too nice because they're trying to preserve co social cohesion and they don't have the budgets that we have in the West. I think that if you look at the world, you always have to fear one of two teams. You have to fear the law or you have to fear the criminals. In the worst countries in the world, you have to fear both. So in America, you have to fear the criminals and the law because they're both out to get you. In England, I think you have to primarily fear the criminals. I think the law, you can get your way around and they can't screw you as hard as they could in America like you just described. But you do have to fear the criminals. When you walk outside of Harrods, the most expensive store in the world, you can be two meters away and they will rob you of your watch. They don't care. And that's because you don't have to fear the law. So there's a power vacuum. So in the worst countries, you fear both. But in most countries, you have to make some decision to fear somebody. Everyone talks about Japan, how great and how safe Japan is. Well, it has a 99.9% .9 conviction rate. Are you telling me there's no innocent people in jail in Japan? <laughs> of course the reason it's safe is because anyone who goes to court goes to jail. They don't care if you're innocent or not. And their view is very simple. We'd rather a few innocent people go to jail to keep faith in the system and to keep society safe overall than be completely interested in the individual liberties of one person. One person's not worth it. We could sacrifice an ant for the ant farm. And the Romanian system, considering this is the poorest country in Europe, is a very safe city, Bucharest. I can walk around in the middle of the night with a million dollar watch on. I can't do that in London. I can do that here. It's actually very safe. Maybe you'll get pickpocketed, maybe. But you'll never get any violent crime. You'll never get robbed. Your car will not get stolen. I drove a $5 million Bugatti in one of the poorest countries in Europe. No problems. I left it on the street. Never got scratched, never got touched. I was in jail, there was a kid in jail. I said, what are you doing here? He said, I was looking in car windows. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, oh, there was a bunch of break-ins around this area and I was looking in the windows. I was like, did you break in? He goes, no, I was just looking in car windows. Snagged him, jail, don't care, jail. Did he do it? Who cares? Jail. He'll be out in four months, five months, six months, seven months, whatever. That's just how they approach their system. That's just it. If you go in front of a judge, jail, jail, jail. And that's how they keep it safe. So it's frustrating when you're inside of it. But when I'm outside of it, I'm kind of like, well, I guess I kind of get it. But then you're trying to look and I've spent a lot of time actually doing this in my freedom, looking at a world map and saying, well, where do I not have to fear the law or the criminals? And I can't seem to find anywhere. So when you say there's bigger criminals on, inside the system, 
You're absolutely correct. And the hubris of a prosecutor, they, they would rather an innocent person lose their life than admit they made a typo. <laughs> and, and I always use this analogy because it's a very simple one. If you don't have a referee in a basketball game, people cheat. In a simple basketball game, people will cheat if they can get away with it. So you're telling me in a system where a prosecutor has no repercussions whatsoever, and it's in his interest to put somebody in jail, regardless of whether the fact they're innocent or guilty. And even if he's a good spirited, good person who doesn't want to put innocent people in jail, everyone around him is eclipsing him. And he's on the verge of losing his job because he doesn't put enough people in jail. You're telling me he's not going to bend a few rules? It's, it's like the violence thing we talked about earlier. If it's a certainty, yeah. It's a certainty. So I did my best to mitigate the certainty. But yeah, you, you're right. You have to find the humor in it. My brother and I would enjoy hunting them for humor. And humor is a fantastic... I mean, it's probably one of the greatest things God has given humanity. I'm sure we could have built the world, perhaps, and done all of these amazing things without the idea of humor, without the ability to laugh. We could still function. But it's the ultimate coping mechanism is laughing. And my brother and I, we spent a lot of time laughing in jail. I'd actually argue we laughed more often in jail than we do on the outside. Yeah. Because on the outside, we're busy and we're working and we're doing important things. But in jail, okay, you're suffering, but how do you make yourself feel better? You just tell jokes, right? So my brother says he's a tough guy and for some reason it's funny or you dance around the cell or... My brother and I had another saying in jail. Tristan goes to me, he goes, you know, Andrew, this is a matrix attack and we don't belong in here. I said, yeah. He goes, but think of all the things we've ever done. I said, what do you mean? He goes, don't you remember when I was 19 and those two boys came up to me in school and one of them said I was stupid, so I knocked them both out. I was like, yeah. He goes, was that really necessary? I was like, probably not. He goes, so we don't deserve jail for this, <laughs> but all in all, fair enough? And I was like, probably. All in all, if you add it all up, <laughs> I could have probably done with a little bit of jail. You get a lot more thinking time, which I think a lot of people waste, and I wasn't there to waste it. But I did make some very clear observations. I noticed how much I am purposefully distracting myself in the outside world. And I think all humans do this. You distract yourself because one, you have things to do. And two, if you start to feel an emotion or have a thought you don't like, you just instantly distract yourself. You get on your phone. If you're sitting there and you think of something sad, like you lost your parent and you think of it, the first thing you do, I guarantee within three seconds, is grab your phone and load up TikTok. And you distract your mind. Or you start working. Or if you think of someone, you call them. Or you text them. Ah, I need to talk to them about this. Okay. And you do it. Jail's weird because you have all these thoughts. You can't distract yourself. You can't action them. You can't talk to the people you're thinking about and you're stuck with them inside your mind. So you have to become a lot more organized with your mind. It certainly is a, a mental exercise, which was very interesting. I had a lot of concerns for what was happening on the outside more than my concerns for myself. I was very worried about the people I care about. I was very worried about my kids and my mother and their mothers and paying bills and is everyone else okay? I think if I knew everyone on the outside was 100% fine, and I did know that, but I, I needed to confirm it quite often. But if I knew that as like a decree, I think I would have struggled even less. I feel like we talk about the man saying he had problems with his wife. You're still a man. You still have masculine duties. The difficulty's just gone through the roof. You still have bills to pay. You still have to protect and provide for people. You still have to be the people, the rock of the family. You still have to be all the things you were, but now you're stuck in jail. So it just amplifies the difficulty and the stress and the pressure. So a lot of my concern was for that. And I'd be sitting there and have an idea or have a thought in my head about what I can do about this person or that person or X, Y, Z. And I didn't have an ability to do anything about it. Or I had to wait for two days till I had a phone call. And you're just stuck with these thoughts in your mind on repeat, which I guess is why people kill themselves because they get a negative thought in their head and they didn't have the mental control to just get rid of it. But as I've said many times before, then all you're doing is burying your head in the sand like an ostrich, hoping that the matrix doesn't run you over. I have a lot of people say to me, Andrew, why do you fight so hard against the system? Because the system's coming for absolutely everybody. It's not just coming for me. It's coming for you as well. It's coming for every single man on the planet. This garbage they just hit me with, opening up cases from 10 years ago that have previously been closed to try and put me in jail because they don't like what I say is proof in and of itself that any man with an opinion is not safe in the world anymore. 
Your ability to speak freely is directly correlated to your insignificance. And if people know who you are and you say the truth, not if you say bad things, if you say the truth, they will try and put you in jail. So you have two choices. You can fight against it and stand up and resist, or you can bury your head in the sand, ag agree with the garbage they put on the news, have a lackluster relationship, a woman who barely respects you because she wishes you were a warrior deep down, work a bull job, listen to the HR department, call everyone by their pronouns, and hope to be eaten by the alligator last. But you're gonna die just the same. So I don't see the point in re re delaying the inevitable. What did I say at the beginning of this? If it's gonna be a fight, I'm gonna swing first. There is a war against free thought. There is a war against the basic tenets of masculinity. They are out to destroy anybody who thinks for themselves or has any semblance of manhood about him. And if that war is certain, which it seems like it is, I'm gonna swing first. I'm not gonna wait for them to, get, to sucker punch me. So the only way I could have not taken this deal and avoided jail was to sit there and be a coward from the beginning and then live a bull mediocre life, which I think is a far more heinous punishment. The insignificance of being a normie and a brokey is far worse than being up here one day and down here the next than up here again. Because I'm not, a I can deal with it all. I was in jail yesterday and I'll be in jail again. And I'll walk out again, head held. Might take a year, might take 10. But I'm not gonna sit and just do. You know how many people have messaged me since yesterday saying, Andrew, it's not worth it. They're too strong, they're too powerful, just shut up. I'm like, I understand why as a woman or a coward that crosses your mind. But let me explain something to you. That doesn't cross the mind of a warrior ever. It's not an option on the board. We're playing chess. I don't think I wish my bishop could move that way because it can't. Whether I'm winning or losing, my bishop operates in a specific way and I can't make it do anything else. I'm not gonna quit and start putting on a dress and talking for Globo to save myself going to the cell. I'd rather go to the cell and tell my cellmates why I'm there. Because I told the truth and I caught another case. I don't even really truthfully see it as self-sacrifice. I just feel like God has given me this platform and I like to believe, and I know this is incorrect, that if someone else had this platform, they'd do the same thing. But that's clearly not true because you look at all the other people with platforms like mine and how quickly they've sold their souls. And if I were to sell my soul, then there's very little hope as it is. What if I, am I gonna cuck now? Am I gonna give up? That's what they want more than anything. That's what all of this is about, to chop off the head of the general. They want to destroy my life to stop anybody else being brave. Remember that Top G guy? He had it all going for him, didn't he? he? Had all that money, flying around the world, living on a yacht. Everything was fine for him. He spoke too much. Don't listen. You're doing well right now. It's not worth it. Look what happened to that guy. He's still in jail. That's what they want to do. I couldn't live with myself if I shut up. I couldn't look in the mirror if I am quiet. As of yet, I'm yet to do a long stretch. So I feel like we're halfway through life too. They'll give me 10 years first. So I kind of feel like I've still got life too kind of left. <laughs> I've got things to look forward to. The cockroaches are waiting in a line with their antennas in the cracks for Top G to come back. So after my 10 year stretch, I'm sure I'm far more likely to get shot in the head. But for now, I thought my 10 year stretch began yesterday. I truly did. Yesterday was all about putting me back in jail. It wasn't even really about extradition. The UK government was saying, okay, we want him for this bullshit. We know you have a domestic case going on. So if he must stay in Romania to make sure he doesn't avoid extradition, can you please make sure he stays in jail until he is extradited, which could be years. And the Romanian government declined and said, no, he's a free man until he is extradited. So a Romanian judge saved my life effectively. But it, it's very interesting to be sitting in a room and there's people talking a foreign language and your life is being decided. And then I, I left jail, I'm sorry, I left the, the courtroom and I wasn't particularly positive or negative. I had absolutely no idea what even happened, to be honest, because I don't speak Romanian. I don't know, I don't even know what was being said. And I walk out and I look at the camera and I smile and I wink and that, that picture has gone viral. That wasn't because I was necessarily happy. It wasn't because I was positive. 
That was because they don't want me to smile. The whole point of this is to humiliate me and, and bring me down. But I smile anyway, that's my resistance. My resistance is ha ha ha, I'm still happy. If I go to jail, I'll dance around with my brother and he'll call himself a tough guy and we'll smoke cigarettes. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. He's gonna sit there and slick back his hair and say I'm a tough guy, I don't care about him, I'm a tough guy. And we're gonna laugh and it's gonna be stupid. And that's how you resist these people because there truly is evil in the world. And we've just discussed in all the ways the system is broken. Isn't Assange's fate being decided right now? They haven't, yeah. they haven't decided formally and finally yet. They're they? trying to get into America where it's never going to get out. Yeah. Bro, it's... You know what the scariest thing about all of this stuff to me is? We've entered a new phase, and I feel like it was the death of Epstein that began this phase. They used to lie to us. The game used to be poker, where they would bluff, and they would lie, and you didn't know their cards. And using the MSM and keeping people deceived and using elements of deception, elements of confusion, conflation, lying by omission, keeping people divided, black, white, Republican, Democrat, etc. They could pretend their goal was not to enslave humanity and that they did care about the truth and you were free. But then they had to kill Epstein, which is a whole nother rabbit hole. And they knew that we would know that they did it. And I'm sure they sat there and had conversations and thought, we can't just kill him, he's in jail. They're gonna know we did it. And eventually they said, you know what? They are gonna know we did it. Let's see what happens. We ain't got any other choice. Just like I said earlier, if, if, the, if the outcome is certain, let's get it done. And they killed him. And they realized, oh, some internet memes. Is that it? Okay, well, let's change the game now. Instead of pretending we're not gonna do these things, and instead of lying and going through all this garbage and pretending we care about freedom, why don't we just admit to everything we're gonna do and the game will change from poker to chess because in chess, you can see what your opponent's gonna do. The question is, what can you do about it? Everyone at home with a functioning mind now understands what they are going to do, what they are trying to do and what they are currently doing. The question is, what are you gonna do about it? What can you do about it? There's, the lie's gone. The, the nice veil they put over it, the sugar coating, they f that off. There's no more sugar coating on the poison. Now it's just poison. Now they'll sit and say, yeah, you talk against us, you go to jail forever. Yeah, so? What are you gonna do? Yeah, the was bullshit. Yeah, the was poison, so what? Take it or you lose your job, get f they don't. They don't care anymore. So we've entered a new phase, which is scary because when they were lying, you could kind of expose the lies as a weapon of attack. But now that they're no longer lying, how do, you exp how do you fight against it when they come along and say, yep, do it anyway? Yeah, but you're lying and you're Satanists. Yeah, we are Satanists. We just put that in the news that we're Satanists. There was a big party yesterday that we're Satanists. You didn't see the Satanist party? Don't care. Do it or you're going to jail. Now, you, how do you fight against you? You can't use the exposing of their lies as a weapon anymore. So you need a new weapon. And that's the, the pertinent question of the next 20 years. What is that new weapon? Because I see people exposing them on the internet and I'm trying to do the same. And yeah, it's the right thing to do to try and wake up as many people as possible. We need a global awakening, of course. But they're not even really trying to hide it anymore. None of these Satanists hide their Satanists. None of these governments hide the fact they'll lock your ass up if you piss them off. None of these people hide the fact, the feds don't hide the fact they'll take all your belongings and they'll raid your house and they'll destroy your life. No, no, no one hides the fact the justice system is broken. No one hides the fact the medical system is... No one, hides, no one hides the fact the border is wide open. No one hides the fact there's illegal immigration. No one hides the fact that you can't afford food anymore. I saw Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury's Instagram post. I don't have Instagram, but I saw it on Twitter and he was shopping with his wife and they were making jokes about shopping and buying the cheaper things because he said, I just bought a Lambo. I should be cheap on the shopping. It was just Tyson Fury being funny. He's a big guy, he can fight. He's also funny. And he was talking about buying a, a discount chocolate spread because the Nutella was too much. And I was just watching this on Twitter half an hour before I got here. And it was six pounds 10 for a jar of Nutella. I'm a millionaire and even I'm like six pounds. That's not meat, that's not protein. That's not even real food, it's sugar. It's sugar condensed with flavoring at six pounds. You could feed, you, you could live for a week. That's six pounds is like nine, 10 bucks. 20 years ago, you could go into a, a reputable store with $10 and buy eggs, rice, 
bread. You could live for a week. <laughs> you can't even buy Nutella. They're not hiding the fact that inflation's out of control. They're not hiding the fact that the money's a lie. They're not hiding the fact that the banking system's a lie. They're not hiding the fact they're trying to put me in jail, opening up old cases that were previously closed. They don't give a sh Now they're like, ah, we don't have to go through all this boring hiding part anymore. How about this? We're gonna f all of you. We're gonna use AI to enslave you all. By 2030, you're gonna have no cash, CBDCs, an electric car, which is only allowed to operate in certain areas, a 15 minute city, and a d in your ass. And you're gonna take it. Cause you haven't got a choice. And I'm sitting here going, Knowing that we have so few years left to even stand a chance of resistance. I guess this goes back into the thing we were talking about earlier. Can I be quiet? Could I live with myself in 20 years from now? I'll always be one of the rich guys. I'll always be okay. I'm in the top 0.01%. All the enslavement comes and it starts on the pe peons and the peasants. I'll be somewhere. I'll be relatively free. I'll have a nice house. They may be forcing everyone else to eat the bugs. I've had my time with the bugs. I'll have the ribeye. I'll be okay. But could I live with myself knowing I was so popular during this monumental and pivotal point in history and I didn't try and make people understand? Could I really look in the mirror? Could I raise my sons and say, you need to be a man of principle and honor? No, I couldn't. So all these other dudes out here might be But if I have to go to jail forever, I'm gonna go to jail forever. Because they're lying and they're evil, and I'm gonna say it. My children are quite young, all of them, and I don't think they truly understood what was going on between the ages of three, four, five, whatever. They don't really understand completely, which I guess is a good thing. I, my lack of visits didn't really upset me that much. I mean, I wish I had visits to kill the time, to burn the time, but as long as I knew everybody was okay, I was okay. For me, for me, it was more about making sure they were okay than anything else. I found it, I thought it was petty from the, of the prosecutors and not let anybody come and visit me. But it's, not, it's his prerogative, I guess. He enjoys it, I guess.